Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name's Emma. Beside me is my husband Ash and our children Minky, Dave, Cookie and Tiny Teabag. This is my identical twin sister Suze. We speak a lot about her and we vlog our daily lives here. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, well, you can see my big head through there. Um, hi everybody. Hello. So you're all waiting for the Q&A. And we've got loads of questions that I've written down. Uh, there was too many to write down and there were a lot of very similar questions. So I hope that I've just picked a range of uh, the best, not the best ones, but the, a range that sort of answer all of you for me and Sue's to answer. There's some just about us. There's some about when we were kids. We asked, we asked you to ask us anything and we thought it would be more sort of medical related but there's you, you didn't you all wanted to know what we did when we were younger the funniest things we did what, anyway we'll get we'll get on with it because there's a lot and it might be quite a long video so this one I'm gonna say it but I think we discussed it because it's quite triggering um but Wendy asked why no human children um it is quite triggering to a lot of people you, you can't always choose whether you have children I personally for one it was never the right time for me. I didn't have any because I was travelling. I wanted to travel. Um, and by the time I realised that I was poorly after a break in travelling, I, I couldn't anyway. Um, but yeah, to me, travelling was everything. And even if I was going on holiday on my own, my partner won't go on a plane. So he graciously allowed me to go on holiday here and there. Um, back to Thailand to see my friends etc and uh, he stayed at home with with the dog and he loves he loved his dog we lost little Molly our our dog a couple of years ago and it was just after your diagnosis wasn't it uh, yeah she was poorly with me and she passed away and then my partner immediately got pepper the puppy the crazy one so um she's not anymore thank goodness no she's a good girl because i was finding it very very difficult to cope with puppy life but yeah um he he very much just loves his um his fur babies more than more than most humans so that was that <laughs> what was that and uh, the next question is sarah fussy fossler asks what did Suze do before her devastating diagnosis job and travel um, I was working for an insurance company, big insurance company, uh, an international one. Thankfully, they they were um, really big and really really looked after the staff, loads of benefits and things. Um, so that's what I that's what I did. I, um, business I was, um, insurance, wasn't a business it? insurance expert, and then I moved on to payments expert. It, it was great. I, I loved that job. I, I essentially still work for them, um, but um, obviously I don't I don't physically work anymore. Yeah, and travel uh, mostly Thailand. Um, I loved Thailand. My friends from a, a very old job back um, in about two thousand and seven um, introduced me to the world. And um, a year later, they'd settled in Thailand, told me to come and visit, and I did, and I never looked back. And I think I went ten times every year after that, and I love it. And it devastates me that I can't go again. I know. Next one. Agnes Watson asks, what causes the delirium? Uh, there's lots of different... Lots of different things. I had I had my Macmillan nurse, my GP, and a student nurse all come and visit me today in my bedroom, which was a bit which was a bit much. <laughs> um, and we talked about that, and they asked me, you know, because I manage my own pain meds, and they were really happy that I'd started bringing down the um, oxycodone levels. They didn't know that I'd got delirium. They know it's a side effect of, of these meds. <clears throat> and I told them, I said to my I said I said to my GP and my nurse today, 
I said my sister was here last week and it's only since my sister's been here that I've really noticed what I've been doing and they were like what and I was like well I, for some reason I was still in a lot of pain and I'd taken like um the full dose of this oxycodone which I hadn't taken in a while I'd been weaning myself off it not weaning myself off it but I'd been taking Cutting the dose down because um, of the shakes yeah and th that's improved as well yeah and um uh emma said what and i went what because i was laid down asleep and she went you were telling me about how many crocodiles are on your phone and i was like oh god i'm gonna have to cut down again i've um, told you guys a few times when she's done it but also it's through lack of sleep yeah i don't i can't sleep um and throughout the day and the night I have to constantly get up and go to the toilet because I don't have any control over what's coming out. Um, so when it comes out, I've obviously got a, I've obviously got to go to the loo. Um, if it's not coming out in the catheter bag, if it's coming out somewhere else that's not being caught, um, and that and that's a regular thing. Unfortunately, if I stop eating, it might it might stop, but I can't stop eating. And they've they've keep telling me I've got to keep eating and the more calories the, the better. Yeah. So it just makes it makes it harder. That's what causes it. The next one, Rachel Madison. What is your favourite book genre? Um, favourite childhood memory, and where did your love of snails come from? Can I go first on the books? Yeah, because oh. I'm a I'm a more of a. She likes Susie audio can books. answer these. I you you listen to me and what my books are talk about. Most of these questions will be aimed at Sue's and then yeah. I'll answer mine later. The the I love books. I I have uh, my house is full of um, bookcases. The whole of the hallway is all oak bookcases, all the way down the mezzanine and and everything. It's all bookcases downstairs on two walls. Uh, in the living room, it's all the back wall is wall to wall bookcase. Um, I've got I've got the shelf above the toilet. I've turned into a bookcase. <laughs> um, I love my books. Um, a lot of my books I was introduced to by my friends again in Thailand. So I like the um, Son Chai Jit the Cheap, um, John Bidet, um series. It's about Thai cop, Fever Dreams. What was the one you just gave me? Thrillers and things. Um, I think I gave you one of the Stephanie Plum. If you ever see Janet, uh, Janet Ivanovich, she's a New York best-selling author, um, and she does the most, the funniest, and I mean f funny, like <laughs> laugh out loud funny. You told me and I would like, stop so, laughing. Th there's a character in the Stephanie Plum book, she's a bounty hunter, but her sidekick is called Lula, and she's a large lady, she wears lots of lycra, she likes her nails three inches long. And I think there's a scene where she gets... <laughs> <laughs> she gets caught in a car window and there's a line about her boobs blowing in the wind. Or something. Oh, God. Her boobs get trapped in the oh, window. Oh, it's so funny. Oh. It's so funny. So Janet Ivanovich is the author and it's the Stephanie Plum series. Read those. But my favourite books of all time are The Invisible Man, the original Invisible Man, the one from 1833. Which is the one remember. I got on the audio book that I told you guys about. Oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's it's frightening. It, I, and I would urge you to read it. Not listen to it. Yeah. Read the book because it, you paint a picture. And yeah, it was a tough listen. It's a really moving book, but it's a, it's actually an easy read. Mm-hmm. It's it's not it's not as hard can, as you, it's not like a weird read. It's just it's an easy read. Um, and then the other one, my favourite of all time, is Blind Faith. Oh yeah, Blind Faith by um, Ben Elton. Ben Elton. Oh, what a brilliant book! And again, absolutely the stunning. audio book. Susie told me that, and I was brilliant. like, that sounds far too weird. It's, for me it's not weird it's fr it's like it was you, but, it's real it puts oh my god it makes oh god it puts certain make oh, it makes it look feel real it puts it it it's so hard to you have to you just have to read it you have to read it it makes you go oh my god it makes you think is this actually that is happening what, that is what it, that's that is real yeah 
and it's and it's Blind Faith by Ben Elton. And the people that get swept up in in Pro- fake news propaganda and propaganda and, and it is scary. And, scary. Yeah. Scary. You need, it, it's really it's really good, but the storyline and the yeah, ending very clever. If you do not oh god, the ending. You have to read it from start to finish. It's it, it, I can't even explain it. It's it's amazing. Life changing. Life changing book. Um, and not, again, not too hard a read. It's an easy read. Yeah, Blind Faith by Ben Elton. Yeah. M. S. Cavs fan. What are some differences and similarities of our personalities? We're both I, very stubborn. I think I think you were always the stronger one. Never cared what anyone thought. I don't care. I don't care what people think. I I was the one that My, always I, cared. I, I always had self esteem. Nobody could tell me any any different. Um, I didn't. Emma was Emma was always a bit concerned about how I looked, people's... what was wearing. Yeah, I didn't get. I didn't care. I was going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, truth be known, uh, what countries have we both lived in? Um, did I travel any with Ash's army career? No, me and Ash met when we were. Late teens, twenties, um, and he wasn't. We weren't together. Past that, he lived on camp or with me and mum, and Shredsel when, when Suze was there. So we we were born in Germany, and we, and then we've only ever lived in. Only a year or England. two later, we came to England. That was it. Yeah. Did we dress identically? We, we, yeah, but well, different colours. Not by choice. Mum, mum dressed us. <laughs> mum dressed us. We didn't. We didn't argue about it. No, we quite liked it, but we had different colours. Yeah. So Emma would have a black jumper with a white butterfly, and I'd have a white jumper with a black butterfly. Or, yeah. You know. Or Susie would be in turquoise, and I'd be in pale pink. They, but they still couldn't tell us apart. No, I don't think Mum could. We still got called Emma Sue's. Yeah, Susie Emma. Yeah. It didn't really matter which one came. And was Jason ever in the army? No. It could have been. It's a bit of a. Outdoorsy uh, man mountain, isn't he? I think he needs the discipline. But no. <laughs> um, there's a couple about me. Why did I become a poo fairy? Um, that was easy. Because I hated the nine Didn't to five the rat race. Being told what to do. I I'd done it all my life, and it was I, I was never valued. Although I'd always be at the top of my game. Yeah, trying um, the hardest. Uh, always the most loyal, longest standing member of the company, but the more you do, the more they ask you to do. Yeah, the harder you work, the harder it is. Yeah. So uh, I saw I, uh, I saw um, about 12, 11 years ago, I saw something online about somebody that did it in America or Australia, and I thought, oh my God, the UK has nothing like that. Mm. And, that and then the rest is history. And I learned to ride a motorbike, a moped, when I was 16, 17. And I think because I... Broken this knee, horse riding, so I didn't learn to drive, and then didn't learn to. I was on motorbikes for well twenty six years. I've been on on bikes, but learned to drive in halfway through that. So I've been on bikes probably more than I've been driving. But the bike's off the road at the moment. It's been off the road a while. But I'm, you know, I tried those those leathers on the other day. I might I might get it back out. Yeah, they they focused on your bum on that video. He did, and I blocked out the word. I blocked out naughty. I blocked out the um, audio Mm. because he said, "I'm just going to pan round to show you that it's not saggy on your bum, but it's only for you." And I said, "I might put it on YouTube." And he went, "Oh well," and he did. He did focus a bit on my Mm. bum, didn't he? Mm. I don't mind it. Um. Denise Reynolds, and loads of you asked this question, but I just picked up the first, so that was Denise. Did we get up to mischief when we were kids, like or like swap identities? <laughs> no, no never we never. To mind. We never even thought of it. We were such goody two shoes. Yeah. Got on with our own thing. Yeah, it never came to mind. It's not something we did. Also, I I probably thought I don't want to get in trouble. So I never did it. Yeah, dad was. Yeah, we wouldn't. We didn't do stuff that would upset dad. It was. Um, he was a bit strict and a bit strict. Not. I suppose the sense of humour wasn't. He was a regimental sergeant major, and we ex- we were expected to. Uh, he he brought his work home with him. The uh, you know fall in line with that. Uh, Lucy Lockyer, if we could go. 
both together on a trip, where would we go anywhere? Thailand. If, yeah, Thailand. Back to... I took Emma. I eventually um, persuaded her to come with me. Well, I'd had a really tough year that year. And she just... She can't. She couldn't believe the paradise that I she cried. found. I cried. Cried every morning. I woke up and I was she so blessed with what I was faced with that I couldn't control my emotions. And I, well, I can't. You lot know I can't control it anyway. But I, I stood out on the beach or the bar or wherever Susie had taken me that day, and I just went, "Oh my God, I'm actually here." Yeah, amazing. It's absolutely stunning. Next one, Ger Sharma. I think that's right. Two oh. Seven six. Did we have twin telepathy at any point? I think we did. We used to have the same dreams. We, yeah, there was a couple of instances where we would wake up as as young kids, like four or five, and we'd say, "I'd have a night." I had a nightmare, um, and Emma would be like, "No, I had the same nightmare," and I'd be like, "No, it was my nightmare," and she'd be like, "No, I had the." And I was, and it wasn't a case of us telling each other and going, "Yeah, that, that was the same." We would go. We would. We would either tell so mum separately, your, what was your nightmare? or write it she down. Says, oh, that was my nightmare. Uh, yeah, just like, it wasn't like we'd told that? each other it. Yeah, and just um, the only other thing is, there's like there's supposed to be a phenomenon with twins where there's like an opposites mirror image twins. Yeah, so if Emma hurt her right foot, I'd hurt my left foot, or things like that. Well, there was a couple of instances of that. You know, but you know, it's it's coincidence. But I was involved in quite a big. You um, put things down to it, don't you? But you knew that that thing had happened in town that time, didn't you? There was a shooting in York, <laughs> which I was involved in, and um, I unfortunately got hit. And Susie knew, she knew that night that something I knew there was had something happened. Was wrong. Yeah, it was a a, a crazy man with an air rifle in his flat he shot six people and i was one of them but she she did know yeah there was a lot of things wrong with that night out that i wasn't happy with mm. anyway next one okay Suze, were you ever given wrong routine regular results at any time leading up to your diagnosis uh well the only thing that was given wrong after after routine or test results was the fact that I had a fibroid on the ultrasound when they can't tell you that they ha you've got a fibroid by looking at an ultrasound scan unless my GP confirmed it today by the way um unless you have had further testing tissue I, sample tissue biopsy um they cannot tell you a GP can't tell you um, a sonographer can't tell you, a nurse can't tell you, and even a radiologist, a consultant can't tell you, unless there has been a laparoscopy or a his hysteroscopy. Oh, sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Hysteroscopy. Yeah, yeah. Unless there's been one of those, they or taken... any another type of some tissue biopsy where they, where they can test it, um, then then they are assuming. Yeah, they're taking a statistical um, guess. And they that told it's me, not. unfortunately, they did tell me it was fibroids. And at that point, I didn't know to question it. Um, now I'm telling other people, you question it. Because I do didn't not know. give up. And it I, might be a fibroid. I've told my GP today, look, there was no saving me. I know that. I was too far gone. Even if, I, even if they'd have told me you can get it tested that day, because it was only a week later that I, I said, you know, I want. I need extra testing and the blah 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 that they told me um that was it that it was terminal um so there was no saving me anyway but I said if somebody else came to you and you told them wrongly on the back of an ultrasound that they had fibroids when actually they it's highly likely they did have fibroids but they there's a chance that it might not be and that person went away and just sat on it and just thought, oh, they're fibroids. I'll I'll get them dealt with. A month later, oh, they're just fibroids. I'll 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 get them dealt with. I'll get them dealt with. I'm a bit scared about getting them dealt with, but I'll get them dealt with. A month later, yeah, those fibroids. I'll get them dealt with. I'll take the painkillers. I'm a bit frightened of the operation. I'll get them dealt with. That's the fibroids. person that could have died, and I need to stop that from happening yeah. because it might not be. It could be cancer or something else. 
that's ruining the because mine was ruining my kidneys everything the, the drugs they were giving me was ruining my kidneys because they didn't know wh what i had they'd wrongly they, they, and also at, at the same ultrasound she started um scanning, scanning up here and i'm like what are you scanning up there for and she went oh it's your kidneys we, we check your kidneys and i said well so what's wrong she said it's a bit swollen and I said, well, I can't wee properly. I haven't. I've been telling them, you know, I can't. I can't wee properly. So that was she. That she was misdiagnosed and given wrong yeah, information given for like a year before. No, but I, d I didn't have the ultrasound a year before. No, but I'm not even like not actual proper results. But when she kept going in saying I can't wee, they're oh, going, I... yeah, you're fine, yeah, you're fine. So that is yeah. wrong information. It wasn't on the back of test results. It was no. on the back of just me going in and saying like, like I'm a still routine, uh, having routine horrendous pain. I can't deal with the bleeding. I, I'm, I can't deal with this. Please help me. No, I can't survive. It's affecting my work. Please help me. I can't deal with this. And it took it took me a year of pleading and begging for them to get the ultrasound um, booked in. It just I don't know what you have to do. You've got to get on your knees and beg in well, I didn't in have, the UK. And you then, had to, and, and it eventually. And then got you results. lot, you lot helped me. Uh, Emma's subscribers helped get her her appointment eventually booked in because they kept cancelling it. Um, it's it's horrendous. You have to get on your knees and beg and here. That's, we're we're you helping you do tell this. Them, we're behind you. You need to tell them I am not a hypochondriac. I do not have medical anxiety, which is the new name for hypochondriac because apparently you can't call somebody a, a hypochondriac now because it's offensive. You're also not fat and depressed, which is what they told Su Susie. Uh, they tell everybody. Even the nurse that came today... Uh, not my Macmillan nurse, um, the uh, student nurse. The student nurse. Um, she said, oh, don't even get me on that. They tell that to me. And I'm like, well, she there works you go. There. there you go. So, yeah, failings throughout. Sorry about that. That was a long... Well, people need to know. It's failings from day one. And and, yeah. and even to the point when it was really, really bad. Yes, she they was think women. They think women want to just get a day off work, get signed off for a couple of weeks, lay in bed, um, eat ice cream. No. They think that the pain you're talking about is something Laziness. that can be dealt with with ibuprofen or yeah. prescription ibuprofen, which is naproxen. And I was like, no, guys, I am, I cannot, I, I cannot physically deal with this pain. <laughs> and think how, think think how long she had to deal with kept it kept sending me away and i was just like what more do i have to do to to convince these guys and then she even wrote in a diary oh maybe i am all right then maybe i am all right i was like well i'm all right then they keep telling they keep me i'm all telling right telling me i'm fine so why am i being a pussy what you know why why am i being like this so this is why this is why we're, we're doing it's things like, no, like this i couldn't cope i'm really burning up hen take your snuddy off can you turn that is that on? Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, yeah. No, that doesn't matter anymore, does it? Mm. Um, sorry, a little pit stop there. So, next one is Kelly. Um, our friend Kelly asked, Fave Thailand... Oh, yes. uh, no, it's other Kelly. Oh! <laughs> um, Fave Thailand memory. I mean, we've talked about this. I can't, I can't picture it other than... When I was quite, I was Just quite all poorly. Out, all of it, yeah. I was quite poorly out there, and one of the locals got me a little, little bowl so of, did, yeah, yeah, a little bowl of chicken soup with a little egg in the middle, and chicken soup fixes everything. Ten day, uh, ten hours later, I was right as rain. Fixes everything. <laughs> Literally fixed me. But yeah, everything, everything about Thailand was my fave memory. Yeah, and my fave memory again, everything. I was immediately taken into a world of the locals because Nick and Rob lived in this tiny little suburb in the middle of nowhere. Um, Which you must do if you go. Please get involved with the locals. They're the most amazing people on earth. Yeah, that you, ha you have to. Don't be frightened. They all want you to come and sit with them and drink a beer Yeah. in their garage. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, could walk down the, you could walk down the street and people just sat in the front, in the front um, living rooms with, with the shutter up. They'd just be on plastic chairs with a massive 60 inch telly um sat on plastic chairs eating food and they'd call you in say you want some food you want some food just the most generous people 
But my fave memory has got to be walking out onto the beach at Silvery Moon on Koh Panyang. Oh, God, I couldn't, be I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe where I was. I couldn't believe that I'd walked out onto some... I mean, you... The Maldives, Mauritius, Barbados, Sri Lanka... Roll them all into one and times it by ten. That's where I was. And I just... The tears... Just, they just fall, you can't help it. They just come. You're not even they? making a facial expression, expression or any noise that just <laughs> And then you and then you start laughing and then it's crying and then it it's every emotion, yeah. Just yeah, that's probably one of my fave memories. I've got too many. I've got too many guys. There's so many. Just if you ever get the chance to go. You don't have to and spend it's not you a don't lot have to spend a load of money. You, you don't can... have to. It can be. You but don't have honestly. If you the more money if you, you save spend, up your flight, you'll be disappointed. Save up your flight, it, which you can pay four hundred pound for, and you then can get flights for four hundred quid. Find your accommodation savvily. Ask people. Just email stay people in before beach you go. Nuts, yeah, but ask the locals. Yeah, where's good to stay? But um, they I mean they'll all tell you they want you to stay at their place. But if you don't like it, if you have a look round and you don't like it, have a look at the next one. Um, but they will don't book like a big package holiday. Just book a night or two. Yeah, and then because you can going. get out the airport and book a taxi and just say I want to go to this beach, and they'll the taxi will drop you off at that beach, um, and then you you can find your accommodation when you're there. Um, I don't think I really ever booked hotels. Um, that, that especially not after the first trip. That was what that I just remembered my favorite my funniest well, memory. What was it? In the tuk tuk. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> we went out oh, we all went night down Bangla Road, which is the not busiest, the best. most craziest place. Yeah, we end well. We ended up finishing through Bangla Road, and we were coming back down to to stay at our. We were at the very end of the of Patong Strip because I knew it was nice and quiet, but only a short walk to where you needed to be for the beach and for everything Night else life and everything and so we were obviously quite drunk we'd had some really nice food again they'd given us really nice food at that porridge place um sticky rice place and then then we'd gone in the toilets and put, uh, put big spider to that big spider um um not to put anyone off i mean it was just minding its own business but... oh yeah no they don't bother you they've got other stuff to do in thailand that's the thing the bugs don't bother you over there because they've got a jungle they're, they're working. to do crap in. They bother you here because you've got a pint of lager. And we've taken know? all their space. Oh. <laughs> and there's nothing more interesting for them in the local vicinity. But um, yeah, we, got, we we stopped to Tuk Tuk thinking there's no way we can walk home in our heels or whatever we were wearing. And Yeah, I didn't want to walk down we that We were tired. <laughs> and uh, we bartered with the guy for a little while... No, nah, it was stand, it's a standard price. It's a set price. Oh, was it? Yeah, it's a set price now. It wasn't then, because I'm no, sure was. we bartered and said, can you take us there for this? No, because it's, it's a set price. Oh, well, either way. So we paid him, and we were like, oh, thank <laughs> God. Only quid. And we, we got in the tuk-tuk, and he, I'm not kidding. And the looked... music started, and it was boom, 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 <laughs> and boom, And all the boom, lights. Boom, 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 boom. And then he stopped. And we were like... He was like, driven five foot, and our <laughs> hotel was right there. And we were like, oh, my God, we were... And oh, he laughed. Oh, it was, it was he so like, He said, actually in. And we were like, yeah, and he went... It's there. It's we're here. Actually in. It's parked outside it. <laughs> <laughs> but he la He was laughing, and he was like... He was like this out the window, wasn't he? <laughs> and he, we were We'd like... You, keep the money. You knew. And he went... And uh, anyway, we let, obviously let him keep the money. It was, um, it was only a few quid, but yeah, funny times. That was so funny. We didn't, we just couldn't see where we were in the dark. No. <laughs> and a few babies later. Um, Kat... Oh, and then when Lynn, you weren't there, but when Linda on Coast of Murray was eating chicken bum, <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd got, we'd come in from a night out. I think we'd come in separately. <laughs> This and there was this older woman called Linda. She was so funny, and she'd wear very little clothing, <laughs> jet black hair, bright red lipstick, all the mascara. Oh, you like, can see me better when I shave. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, we'd cu- we'd come in. First of all, she walked down the path and stepped over a cobra. <laughs> Didn't even know what she was doing. She just stepped right over We're it. Putting people off here, going there. A little black snake. Well, it didn't do anything. Yeah. And then the mum was going, "Little black snake, little black snake." <laughs> and Linda was like, "Happy about me?" <laughs> she didn't have a clue. She was totally sloshed. And um, yeah, and then um, we we saw this barbecue barbecue bike because they have the barbecues attached to the motorbikes, and uh, and he was he was just on the street doing a bit of barbecue for people wandering by. There was literally only me and Linda on the street. And I knew what they were because me and Emma always used to save the chicken bum. Yeah, like we, eat, we like the weird bits of the meat. And um, anyway, she said, oh, I'll have one of them, one of them and one of them. And some of it was, you know, it was like belly pork. Some of it was crispy beef, whatever. And they were all on little sticks and he just puts them on the barbecue. Um, and when they're ready, you take Give sticks. Him in. That's it. Um, and anyway, she said, what is this? Yum, yum, it's yum. like crunchy, but chewy. And it's not, it's really nice. Like, <laughs> And I went, it's chicken bum. And she went, what is it? And I, I was like, it's ch- <laughs> Linda, it's chicken bum. And the ma- and, But the barbecue man went, chicken asses. <laughs> chicken ass. Is <laughs> it chicken ass? <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you spit it out? No, she carried on eating it. She left it. Uh, That's another thing. Always try new foods because it yeah. might be the best food you've ever tasted. I might put you off if you know what it is. Just eat it first. <laughs> oh, right, we yeah. need to move on. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Good question. Yeah. Um, Kato Dan asks, who's older? Me, by like 17 minutes or something. 18 minutes or something, yeah. I was too busy looking around. Um, You've been in there nine months. I know. Uh, Sue asks, uh, did we have troll dolls? Yes, we did. We did, and I still got mine. Susie's still got hers. I tried to keep everything. And one of them that just, I, I cover and treasure everything I I, I own. Um, and people think, oh, it's being childish, it's being this. It's like, no, I actually just tra- I treasure just it. Just love it so much that you keep it and yeah. love it. Yeah. And do we have matching tattoos? No. No. We're not that. No. I, I Every tattoo I've got, I've designed in some way m- myself. Um, so the bluebird, um, it wasn't a bluebird, it was a swallow on the, on the piece of paper that they did it. All of mine are ta- b- bamboo tie, by the way. They're all done by bamboo. Um... But I asked him to make it into a bluebird, which he did. I've got. A I loop actually want on my arm to copy a, that though, and a leg piece as well. And they're all done by um, Thai bamboo. But so I do. I do want. I do want that one to match Sue's. Thank you. You let me do it. Yeah. Okay. I love gingers forever. We love you, uh, mm-hmm. Sue's. Is there any way? For us to learn how to make your beautiful fairy houses, I'm truly obsessed with yours, and you're truly so talented in your crafts. Um, there's some step by steps on Instagram on my Instagram, which is at Cialia Sculpts. At Cialia being the um, Latin name for bluebird. Um. So yeah, Emma will put it on the screen or down below. So yeah, there's some step by steps on there, but essentially there are card like a dog biscuit box or a bottle um oh yeah yeah mainly they're all cardboard them ones um so it's a dog biscuit box cut cut into a triangle so you it's hard to explain so you cut the top in a triangle yeah and you cut down one side so you can open the box out and then you can do the interior you can paint all that and make sure that you've got every bit, all your interior stuck down so you've got little magical things to look at. And then you stick the box back together, cover it in paper clay, which I use DAS. They're a brilliant brand. They've sent me some amazing PR packages. <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe it when they sent me it. It was just like... It was all from her Instagram account and then seeing what she made. Yeah. Um, they sent me... Um, 
God, 50, 60, 70 packets of their of polymer clay. Yeah, really All lovely. different colours, a huge display box. Loads of tools. Um, but yeah, it's paper. I use the paper clay, the white one. <clears throat> um, you smooth that over. You cut your windows. Um, and then basically you cut a, a big strip of cardboard for the roof. Fold it in the middle. Um, glue gun that on. And then um, all the additional pieces snails. I made, the snails, the mushrooms, the doors, the window frames, um, the fungi growing out of the, the walls, all of that stuff's made out of polymer clay. And you just bake those, get them all painted up, and then you stick, you stick them on. Um, but yeah, have a look at my Instagram. You might have to go back a bit. But there's some step by steps there showing you how the boxes turn into a fairy house. Yeah. Uh, that's what we didn't ask actually. Rachel mm. Madison, where did your love of snails come from? Um we went off on a tangent. I've always there. loved snails. Me me and my um one of my oldest friends, Kelly. Sorry. Kelly A. Um or now Kelly C. <laughs> I always still call her by her maiden name. Uh, all, my, all my friends I call by their maiden names. Um, but yeah, we used to, like on a rainy day when we were little, we would go out and save all the snails and slugs off the pavements. We'd move them back into the vegetation. So people didn't crush them. Yeah, it was one of our, one of our earliest memories together doing that. Um, and I did that as well, but not with you two. No, <laughs> can remember me and Kelly doing it in the rain. Yeah, and then when I started sculpting, um, especially with polymer clay, I found fungus and moon on Instagram, and wow, grab her um, mushroom and slug. I thought the other month. Oh wow. I thought this was real, and I thought a slug had come in. <laughs> I support the Instagram accounts that I love. And if I love them, I'll buy something. Most of these beautiful people have gifted me something as well. But I will buy... Oh, there's quite a lot of dust on it. I'm sorry. It adds to it. It's actually not that bad. Fungus and Moon. This is what she's... Look at it. Oh, wow. It It's so real. It's so real. And it's so shiny that I, I caught it out the corner of my eye. And I was like, oh, my God, Susan, there's a slug on you. There's a slug on his shelf. And Susie keeps, it, despite a little tiny bit of dust, she keeps this room absolutely spotless. Oh, yeah. It's Look hard how to cute dust it is. Anything. But, um, yeah, that's Fungus and Moon on Instagram. And she is, once I found her, I, wow. Doing the world open Yeah, and she gave, she's given me loads of advice about sculpting snails. She does amazing snails. Um, moths. Um... She's incredible. I can't pick them up. Can no, because they've got the lights in. But that one? You, you can, that's not very, it's not finished. I'm just like, for the new viewers that haven't seen it, although they can have a look on your... Um... Have a look on my Instagram. This one isn't finished by a long shot. So the Susie makes them all by hand. Well, she did when she was well. Yeah. When they when you put a light on, you can see all the interior and everything that's inside. Can I put, I'll put my phone... Torch up it here. Don't want to blind anyone. Oh, look, guys! All right, it's magic. So, there's candles in there and a, um, some gems and a fireplace and all sorts. Just magic. I'll just put that back. I think there's a Christmas tree in that one, actually. Uh, I think there is. So that that's that. So sorry, Rachel. We went off on a tangent about um, uh, oh, yes. favorite books. Okay, next one. Favorite books. Yeah, it was way back there. We didn't answer it. Oh. Um. Did we always get along? No. No. But then, what close related siblings it's do? Been on and off. On and off, on and off. We had very, very different lives. We had very, yeah. very different hobbies. Yeah. We both danced for a long time. We both rode horses, which I carried on. 
Susie then just preferred to go out with her mates, I think. I yeah. carried on with the horses. And then it swapped. Then roles reversed. I went out and clubbed like crazily. And I was crazily. I, went, I just worked. and We both worked. We never didn't work. We always worked mm. very, very hard and always had full-time jobs. But yeah, no, we didn't get on. And um, this is not going to be... We're not going to cry through this Q&A because it, there's, there's some very light-hearted and some very hard-hitting questions. But um, Susie said to me last week or the week before, she, she started crying in bed. She said, I'm so sorry that I was never there for you as a sister. And I'm like, no, that's, that's, that's how lives go. And you cannot be sorry for anything that, that went ahead. Don't ever be sorry for how you've, anything in the past is, is, is gone. Anything that was ever bad, because we never would have had this relationship now, which is a horrific thing to say. If this wasn't happening to Susie now, we would never, we never would have been this close. We wouldn't have got to know each other like we have. We wouldn't be together all this time. We wouldn't want to be out of each other's sight. And it's I the truth. I would never text my sister and tell her I love her. I would never do that. And now I do it every... I do it ten times a day. Twenty times a day. We do, we're never off the phone. When I'm out working, I'm either sending her a video or a message or a, a voice note. And this is why I would... Again, trying to tell you, if you have siblings or something, please try and get your relationship sorted because... And do you know why you we never did? You what you've got. Yeah. And do you know why we never did? It's because you th you think of your parents dying, but you ne I never once thought that I would be losing my never sister. Never once thought of you going. No, never. never. I never once thought that we would lose each other in a billion years. That's not, that's not, that's not, isn't it? So that's, you no, know, we didn't always get on. So, uh, Pauper177, as twins, you like the same things. I think we will. We've just sometimes touched on that. A lot of things, sometimes. crafty animals, travel, yeah. work. <sighs> but no, lots of different things we, you know, Susie likes loads of different music that I didn't. Um, boyfriends and partners, would you say that they have similar qualities to each other? Well, I think we always, we always set out to find somebody that, was kind and loving and hard working and we, we, we and we failed. <laughs> <laughs> We're only kidding. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a hard question to ask. Each of our boyfriends they don't or have whatever. A few qualities the same. Others, there's a million qualities that they don't. Ash have. and Jason don't like people. Yeah. And they like they dogs. Like animals, mainly dogs. Yeah. And, the, and but any animals. Solitude. Yeah. Just. <laughs> so yeah. Next one, Sarah. Uh, Sarah was six two four nine. Have we done a video on Susie's symptoms? Yes, we have. There's quite a few actually, um, but I'll let Susie recap on that quickly now. But um, I'll link the video if I can find it. Uh, so a lot of pain, a lot of pelvis pain, flank pain, hip pain, lower back pain. Is that right at the beginning. Yeah, but then you think, well, I've always had hip pain and lower back pain. You should don't ever. This is one another thing. Don't ever go to your doctor and say, "I think it's oh, you know, it's my back. I did it and I fell off my bike." Or, I did it. And she told me off. Fell off my horse. It's, don't say that because it might it might have because the DP will go. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what they said no, to me with like, the endometriosis. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, you fell off your bike. That's what it is. Don't give them clues. No, just Let say them what your symptoms are, you. and then stay quiet. Because to be honest, they ain't doing their jobs. They, they're not diagnosing anyone because they're just waiting for the person to say, yeah, I know how, why I'm ill, this is why I'm ill. And they go, yeah, that's what it is. I'll, give you, you, I'll give you an approxim. And antidepressants. And then what was your next symptoms? Um, the bleeding. When you're weeing. Problem, oh, problem weeing. Yeah. Well, that, I think that came after, but I don't know. I can't remember now anymore. I think you had problems with your pressure weeing and getting your wee out. Yeah, I was trying to push my wee out and... Again, I, I was wondering what they they were like. Well, we'll put you we'll put you towards the incontinence clinic, and I was like, no, it's not weeing myself that's the problem. It's not being able to wee that's the problem, and I think that's more worrying because there's obviously a blockage. That yeah, I can't push it out. Um, 
And I wondered why they weren't taking that more seriously because that was scaring me. And I told, I kept on telling them about it. Um, and again, it wasn't until I went to my MS cons consultant and said, look, could this be a neurological problem? Could it be MS related? Um, and they were like, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do you a, a referral to the incontinence clinic. They rang me back a year later. A year later. Oh, hello, Miss G Miss Gardiner. Which isn't our name. Which they get a name wrong name. all the time. It's Garner. <sighs> and I said, uh, no, Miss Garner. She said, oh, Miss Gar uh, Garner. And I went, yeah, who's speaking, please? She went, it says they're from the incontinence clinic at your hospital. And I went, you're too late. I've been told I've got terminal cancer. So well done. Good. You, you, it's a year later after the referral. You've called me to, nearly to the day. Exactly one year after. So congratulations. It was too late for me. And I just, I just slammed the phone down. Well, obviously, you don't do that anymore. But yeah. <laughs> with my mobile phone um and uh never spoke to them again and no, then no, no, no. i had the the bleeding and i didn't bleed i'd never had periods because i went on the mini pill about 10 years ago the um which was brilliant for me i had no mood swings no <clears throat> periods no pain no cramping no bloating no nothing and i was like this is great so i just carried on with that and my gp um also uh, advised me just carry on with the mini pill there's no reason why I should come off it and I was like I'll carry on suited me brilliant so she didn't bleed so I didn't bleed but then the bleeding started and it was a it was gushing like it was it was gushing um I couldn't pull my knickers up quick enough before it had flooded everything what what part of that s seems normal and then you go to your gp and they tell you it's normal so then you think me it was normal maybe it's normal they, they gave me some blood stoppers some tranexamic acid um which stops the bleeding temporarily and you can you can only take through like three in the day that you're bleeding and then you have to stop um so i was taking that but it was becoming unmanageable and of course, because I was stopping the bleeding, it was just pooling inside me. Um, and therefore, it got to the point where I had to call an ambulance because the next gush, when it when my body had to force it out, um, it took everything with it. It just every it just every it was horrible. I didn't know what was what. And I think there that, was bits is that when that, we. Well, I called... I called is that when you went to Resus? No. No, this was way before. Okay. And I called an ambulance and they came in and they were like, we don't want to... We can't leave you here with you, with that amount of blood loss. Um, We really want to take you in. So I was like, no, I, I have to go in. Um, So nearly threw up in the bloody ambulance because, oh God, the horrible... Don't ever lie down in an ambulance if you can help it. They're just... I can't I can't do ambulances. They're horrid. Um, they just always make me feel sick. And uh, anyway, we got there. And we were in a corridor. And there was maybe six to eight beds in front of me. Um, with all types of different people. Children, elderly. Everybody. From everybody to everybody that had come in on with an ambulance I don't know if we should mention this like because they'll blame you for going home no they won't they won't leave this in they won't blame me for going home because I gave somebody else the opportunity to get in there quicker I they were telling me it was normal remember I know. so I, know. I just thought I just oh, I'll, I'll go home and deal with you. it if I said as long as I'm stable if you've checked my bloods and my and you and my levels and my haemoglobin and everything, and you think I'm stable, and I can go home, I'll go home. Because they also told me that once this li this line of people in the beds, every single bed had two ambulance chaperones with them. <clears throat> and I said, what happens to the drivers of the ambulances while these people are in the beds, including me? 
And they went, we've got to stay with you. So I said, what happens if somebody calls an ambulance? And they said, we've got to stay with you. I said, so what happens if there's only two ambulances left out there and someone's got a heart attack and someone's on the floor and they've been stabbed? What? And they were like, <clears throat> we have to stay with you. And I was like, no. I said, if I'm okay, you tell if you tell me I'm okay and my levels are okay, then I'll I'll just get a taxi home and you get back out on the road helping people. And that's what I did. And whether I should or I shouldn't, that's what I did. So you can come at me all you want um for going home at this point they were telling her that she wasn't still, poorly they were still telling me it was a i was it was there okay was nothing... and it was normal they told me a thousand times it's normal for what then i just don't uh, get it <laughs> i don't know emma i hadn't had any diagnosis testing anything normal for periods and they just kept on giving me naproxen and they kept on um telling me it was normal so what why wouldn't I go home and get back in my comfy bed if everything, if they said everything was fine? You know, other than taking the tranexamic acid, they hadn't given me any other thing that was going to stop the bleeding. So mm. I could, I could measure it, I could deal with it myself at home. Keep that, keep all that in, Emma. Keep all of this in. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you. Okay. That's what I did. Based on the advice that they were giving me. Mrs. Leanne Jones. Hi, Leanne. We love Leanne. Hi, we Leanne. Love you. Um, funniest memory of each other. Um, She's got a YouTube channel, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Leanne has. I'll link her below. <laughs> um, the funniest memory, I can't think of each other, but I've done oh. a funny memory that I had, but Susie's, Susie's got a funny one, oh, I think. No. Right. This was this was really embarrassing. <laughs> Stop it. You're already laughing. I t only told her briefly what it was. Um so we we must have been maybe I don't know, eight or nine. And we'd gone to some we'd gone to some sort of function down in Essex with my uncle. Now my uncle works for one of the sheikhs in the United Arab Emirates. I'm not going to say any more. Um, but um, he took us to a car boot sale in a stretch limo. Um, and this was back in 1998. I mean, we're, we're, this this car had a phone. We didn't have 1988. phones. 1988? Uh, oh, yeah, God, no. It was 1980. Yeah, sorry. 1988, 1989. And it was just, I mean, it was mental. It was unhurt. We couldn't believe it. Um, and so just going to a car boot sale. I don't even remember it. And um, I don't know whether you'd stayed at home, uh, uh, at back at um, Uncle and Auntie's house. Class, I don't know. Um, yeah, it could have been. And um, we we got to this car boot sale and, you know, I'm skipping along looking at the stalls mum and dad and whoever else who had come with us um were tagging behind me and i went a few stalls ahead shut up i went a few stalls ahead and um and i thought oh, i'll have a look at, i'll just have a look at these things anyway i sneezed like this really explosive sneeze and the biggest loudest fart <laughs> came out at the same time and i mean like the big like the biggest, biggest one you've ever done this trumpet came out at the same time as my sneeze and it was like hiroshima had gone off <laughs> everybody stopped and i i just was like that wasn't me i'll just pretend it wasn't me she's the only one that carried I'll on i'll carry on as normal <laughs> that wasn't me and um anyway I carried on as normal, pretending that that had happened. It, I mean, it was clearly me. And uh, uh, and then mum caught me up. She was tables and tables back behind me. And she caught me up and she put her arm around me and she went, Is that you? <laughs> and I was just like, oh. She had this long coat on and she hid, she hid me in it. 
she hid me in it and I walked around holding it holding onto her thigh under her coat <laughs> the whole rest of the way. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that she literally just came up to me and went I heard you sneeze, wasn't was, that you? Wasn't that you? And I was just like, Oh, I don't believe it. <sighs> Everybody knew it was me. <laughs> right, we've got a few That was a good one to end on. Well, it was, but we've got a few horrible ones to end on now. Uh, why would we end on horrible ones? Let's do them in another one. No, because they're what needs to be answered today. Okay, hurry up then. Okay. So, um, God's Child 3640, what kind of cancer do you have, please, and has it metastasized, and how yes. long did it take to spread? I don't know how long it took to spread, because I don't know when, I, when it started and when it stopped. You don't know, you don't know these things. It's cervical cancer. Um, yes, it has metastasized whatever the yeah. word is um it's spread f from my neck down to my pelvis so it's in my liver it's it's Lymphatic in my system. stomach my lymph node everywhere so yeah I've, that's it <sighs> york universe did you ever go back to the doctors or health professionals and let them know that they were really screwed up yeah yeah, and she did today when they came to visit her today. Yeah, I told them the failings <clears throat> and what needs to stop. It wouldn't have saved me. It wouldn't have saved me anyway, because well, the the um, getting the ultrasound. If they, even if they'd have told me, you know, it could be cancer. By that point, it wouldn't have saved me. What what annoys me is the very first time she went in with the first symptoms. If they'd have, if they'd have really just taken, I gave them a list of the symptoms every single time, then, and then I fully believe she could have been saved, and they, or at least about ten years. Yeah, Cause they it's could like, have given her a full hysterectomy, uh, a colostomy bag, and a urostomy bag right at the beginning, like a year and a half before diagnosis. Yeah. Then this wouldn't be happening. But anyway, that's that's that one. That's by the by, it's gone now. Carrie Cooper, what did your GP finally have to say? when it was shown that you had advanced and then terminal cancer after sending you away time and time again? Uh, she sorry. continually just said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. There's That's nothing else they could they say. Could say. There's nothing, they, nothing else she could say. The, we'll, we'll do a, the, the, probably the worst one and then we will end on a, on a, a lighter one. Um, Suze, what is your life expectancy net from now? Uh, from now they've said June, but they don't. They don't know. So June you know, twenty four just... is what they think. Yeah, her body can hold out from the what it's the damage that's been done. Um, but that might that could be completely wrong. My neighbour across the road, he has throat cancer, and they told him four years ago that he had eight weeks to live. And he's still going. So and Susie you can't manages take hers. A pro you can't take that type of prognosis and and believe it. You just have to hope. Yeah. And then another girl, her, you know, pe people I know are dying all all the time, and you know the the funerals are coming up on Facebook, or and and they were told that they had, and that you know, and they've already gone. It's just you can't tell. I, f I firmly believe that with the type of cancer that Susan's got and the symptoms that she's got and the, the danger to her that she's that she's carrying on for as long as she is because she's keeping herself so incredibly clean. I'm uh, trying. It's really hard. It's hard. But that's why she gets up two hours. And some of you are saying, why is she getting up to, for every two hours? She should I've have care. She's got to clean myself. She, no, it doesn't, she, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. She wants to be able to keep control of also, her life. Also, why would somebody else wipe in me? Be the no different. Susie knows how clean she can I get herself need a and what carer she does. To do it for me. Plus, she Plus it's a resource that I'm taking away from someone else. And I'm not a martyr. I'm not saying, oh, you know, I'm going to give all of my services that I'm entitled to. I'll give them to someone else. Um, Susie won't let me hoover. Not, she, no, but she wants that's to be able to do it. No, but I won't. I, I don't need somebody to do it. No, because the more she stops, the more she'll waste away. And like I said, if uh, I don't need a carer. If I needed a carer, believe me, I'd get one. Oh, I believe me, I'd get one. But I have one, um, and Jason looks after me. In, in Jason the does mid, look after her. Mid, you know, in the in, in the well, I'm not here. A lot of people think that you know Jason's not here. He doesn't do anything. He's just not in the video. He just doesn't want to be ever on camera. He's, he's, mm -hmm. he's a is a is the grey man. Mm -hmm. um, and so the last one is. Um, for the shoe business, I suppose we could answer that. 
um, crystallised this, my little crystal shoe business that I had, um, which Susie did join in for a bit and make some beautiful crystal creations as well. Um, it took a long time. That was one of the questions. I mean, hours, hours and hours and hours to make a pair of um, wedding shoes or something like that. Each Swarovski crystal was placed on individually. Um, and the inspiration to start, I think it was Thelma Medine off Big Fat Gypsy Weddings and mm. um, The Only Way is Essex. So when all that bling took over... You okay? I'm flogging a bit now. Oh, this is the last one, my angel. Um, so that was the inspiration to start. So thank you, everybody, for joining us on that little q and I hope that we answered everything that that you wanted to know. Mm -hmm. I know there was some... I know it was a big mix and match, but I think that's easier for us to just go into because it was inev inevitable we were going to get the horrible questions but we didn't want to do a whole we're not going to pick them out sit video and pick on that them out. we're just going to go through as as they were this is asked. life it's still up and down there's still joy within the shit so um yeah sorry i looked presentable at the beginning and now i'm looking yep. oh dear i'm gonna have to go to the loo love you so much love you so much love you guys love you guys Plans are changing, rearranging all the time So come away with me Let's break free